when you were nominated for the Oscar, did you think you were going to win? No. I didn't because I was competing with the ultimate favorite, everybody's darling, vulnerable victim, Judy Garland, who was up for, um, she was nominated for um, Judgment at Nuremberg. And uh, not only that, she was in a hospital, and they were going to put cameras in the hospital. I thought, oh, well. But I was in Manila doing this crappy war film called Cry of Battle, if you please, and uh, with Van Heflin. And I flew myself in. I, it was a very expensive trip, flew myself in. I paid for that so that in case I won, I was there. The studio didn't? The studio would have paid today, I'm sure. You're damn right. But um, um, I had to be here just in case. And I really thought I had a slim chance, slim. And I was gone during all the hoopla. I was doing that film, so I wasn't in L.A. to feel any buzz. You know, I may have gotten a certain kind of hopeful buzz had I been in town. Because apparently at, at that time, particularly our producers were saying, oh, we're going we're gonna to garner a whole bunch of awards. And they certainly thought I was one of the ones, and that George Chakiris was one of the ones who stood a pretty good chance. But um, I just came from Manila. I was isolated out in the Philippines, and I, I didn't get any of that. So Nowadays, they campaign for Oscars. Interviews? Well, no, actually, yeah, covers. that's true. Well, I think they were doing that then. It's just that I wasn't in town. <laughs> I, was, I was in the Philippines uh, making the rent. Did you ever get the Oscar engraved? Oh, yeah, they do. You don't. You're not allowed to have it till it's uh, engraved. Oh, because I read an account that said you just got right on the. Point of the oh Oscar. no! Wait a minute. No, nope, I'm wrong. They normally do that. They take it back and engrave it. I did not. I took it with me. I clutched that guy, and uh, I ha I did a special, a television two-hour television special in Japan after I finished the movie that I was making, and I carried him with me everywhere I went. Everywhere I went. That's right. And yep. where is it now? Oh, it's in my house. But I mean, what on display. Room? What it's room? in the living room. Okay. <laughs> it took me years to put them on display because I just felt it was such a show-offy thing to do, until somebody finally said to me, "You know, Oscars or prizes like that. What did she say to me? Because I always said to her, I don't have all my awards out because I, I just feel it's it's so pushy.'" And she said, "Rita, those those are awards. Those are not trophies, and they are earned. Awards are earned." Trophies are given. And I thought, well, she's right. I earned that. And how did it change your career? The Oscar? Not one whit. But that's happened before. That's not unusual, particularly when, you've, uh, when you're in a featured role. If you're in a leading role, it really does make a difference. But it didn't make a difference, and particularly because uh, again, it's the Latina business. I was offered more roles like Anita, only in inferior movies, you know, gang stuff. And once I got the Oscar, I said, no, I'm not going to do any of that stuff anymore. And uh, I showed them. I didn't make a movie for seven years. I did theater, mostly regional theater, summer stock. I did television, but I didn't make a film. Did you have an agent who was going nuts over this? I don't know that he was going nuts. I think they're so used to that, you know. Uh, he really tried. He tried so hard. And the only things that were offered to me were gang things. And, um, and he knew I didn't want to do them. So that was that. Um, I didn't get a movie till seven years later, and it was with Marlon Brando, who, in fact, with whom I was very friendly, having been boyfriend and girlfriend for many years prior to that. Uh, he said, I think I got a film for you, because we used to talk on the phone regularly, and I said, you're kidding, really? And it was a film called The Night of the Following Day, which was to be made in France, and um, he said, yeah, I think you'd be good for this, and you need a movie, don't you? I said, ooh, yeah. <laughs> and I got the part, really, due to him, the producers didn't especially want me, but he said, come on, you know, he knew it was a little film, it wasn't a big deal. And I got the lead in it, it which was wonderful. He made me put on a blonde wig. He said, come on, change your image. And actually, I looked, I didn't know, I didn't realize it. I looked wonderful as a blonde. Interesting. But I think all skin people do, can look marvelous as blondes. And that started my film career again. After that, I made a film with um, 
I can't remember if it was Poppy with Alan Arkin or Carnal Knowledge with, uh, with Jack Nicholson. It was one of those two. So you walked away from film, but you walked into some television. I did. I did more television. More the same thing, you know, the run for your lives, all of those things, those series things where you were a guest actress on a, a whole bunch of stuff. Society was changing so much in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Were your roles changing? Uh, I'll tell you what I did after West Side Story. I went to London to live. That's right. That's what I did. That's what I did to get away from uh, the temptation of uh, accepting roles that I felt were detrimental to me personally and to my career. So I went there and did a wonderful musical called She Loves Me on the stage. And from there I went to New York and did another play uh, called The Sign of Sidney Boustine's Window, uh, Lorraine Hansberry's very last play. And that's when I started to get into films again, at about that time. So if we do talk about TV in the 60s, were you still doing the ethnic roles? Were they starting to think of you more as an actress rather than a type? You know, I think that uh, TV in the 60s, I did very little. I think I did very, very little television in the 60s. Uh, I did a lot of things like Dinah Shore. I did Merv Griffin. I did The Tonight Show, where I would sing. Variety. Yeah, right. Mike Douglas show. I did a lot of those. I did game shows. Um, God, I don't remember. There were loads of game shows then where they had celebrity panels. Lots of that, but I don't remember doing dramatic stuff in the 60s on television. How about GE Theater, The Stone? The what? The Stone. <laughs> See, I don't remember. <laughs> Was that in the 70s? <laughs> The 60s. The 60s, I don't remember. And I have Tales of Wells Fargo in which you played Lola Montez. Oh, there you go. That's right. More westerns. More westerns. <coughs> Lola Montez. And, and what was... That, boy, that was really a... That was a sad little series. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. The same damn wagons I'd been on, you know, since I was 17. <laughs> Nothing changed. The horses were just older. The Indians had gray hair, I swear. My buckskins looked the same, or my senorita stuff. What was Track Down? Track Down? Oh, was that the, that was with Bob Culp. Was that Bob Culp? Yes, I did one of those, another, another senorita. What about Zane Gray Theater, The Last Raid, directed by John English with Fernando Lamas? I don't remember that at all. Again, you know, these were job. These were jobs. You had to. F you accepted them for several reasons, particularly if you were a Latina. Remember, I was like the only one around, because the Latino men they used always had the gold teeth and were villains. Truly, truly, and um, there were almost no Latina women. None. I was the one. Um, you did it for two reasons. One in order to be seen now and then, because it's certainly true that if you're not seen, you are forgotten. And uh, you always hoped that despite the, the, this, the stereotypical role, you could somehow still show that you had ability as an actress. And number three, you had to eat. You had to pay the rent. So they were jobs. It's like someone saying, well, you know, I'm a... I'm a I uh, do secretarial day work while I'm doing, you know, while I'm, I'm studying or wanting or trying to do what I really love to do. Same thing. It just happens to be or look a lot more glamorous. It really, for me, it wasn't. There was no glamour at all, at all, at all. Do you recall what Playhouse 90 was about, Alas Babylon? Gee, Alas Babylon. Dana Andrews, Don Murray, Kim Hunter, Barbara Rush, and Burt Reynolds. No. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I don't remember. I remember the title. And Bert was in it? Yes. He's my pal. I got to talk about that. I got to talk to Bert. That's amazing. That's quite a cast. I know I did one of those shows also with Dina Merrill. And I think I did one of those shows with Cliff Robertson. There were a lot of, uh, you know, well-known people where I did kind of featured roles on those shows. Playhouse 90. Don't remember. But I remember the title. 